Hello everyone, and uh, welcome to RimWorld. So RimWorld is a story generator that uh, is basically, um, it, it's based around uh, Dwarf Fortress, if you've ever uh, heard of that game. So Dwarf Fortress is pretty complicated. It's been kind of, um, it's been, you know, talked about as, oh, the most complicated game ever and all this stuff, which is, I think is kind of garbage because if you under once you once you do learn how to play Dwarf Fortress, um, then obviously uh, you know the learning curve kind of kind of stops. But uh, it is a very complicated game, and RimWorld's similar in that. I don't like to say it's oh it's basically the same game, just a different theme. Like I think that's trash um, because I think all they share is the same genre, which is. Uh, the uh, management style genre. So it's kind of like uh, Factorio too. I, I've, I've seen some videos of Factorio, but uh, I've, I've never played it. So uh, yeah, so we're gonna be t checking out RimWorld. So uh, RimWorld is a game where you start off with a couple of people, one, or, one to about five people, and you basically wanna survive. Um, so you get onto this uh, planet and uh, you have to survive the elements and you have to go through um, and you know defend yourself and you have to mine for resources kind of like kind of like that uh, survivalist uh, management genre so anyway we're gonna take a good look at it um, I'm just I'm gonna be uh, sorry you're probably not hearing any game volume right now um, I'm just gonna be uh, I'm just pulling something up here because I wanted to uh, give a really uh, in-depth walkthrough of, uh, of RimWorld. I wanted to explain basically everything because I haven't seen much of a uh, of a walkthrough that goes into a whole lot of depth. I've seen some some explanation some explanatory videos and stuff, but a lot of it's like let's plays and stuff like that. I wanted to just give a an overall in-depth guide. Now, obviously, the way I play is very different than the way that you might want to play. So um, keep that in mind as you watch this. Uh, I have a certain way. I like to do things. I have hundreds of hours in this game, so I know what I'm doing. But uh, that doesn't mean that I have the optimal best way of doing things. So we're going to hit this new colony uh, button here. And we're going to be taken to a scenario. Um, so you get to choose basically a scenario. Crash landed is the basic scenario. Um, you have three survivors and basically what you have to do is you get a certain level of technology and you have these resources as listed on the right here and you have to work your way from there. The ultimate goal of this game is to get off the planet that you've uh, found yourself on. Lost Tribe is different. You start with five people, but you start with less resources and you start with less technology. So it it's quite a lot more difficult because you have more mouths to feed right at the beginning and uh, you start with lower technology. Next is the Rich Explorer. This one's even more difficult. You start with a good amount of technology, some pretty good starting stuff, but only one person and you have to basically survive for a very long time doing a lot of tasks with just one person. Uh, next is Naked Brutality. So this is the hardest. So this is where you literally go in naked one person. You have no resources. Uh, I think you might start with good technology, but that's it. It's, it's as brutal as it gets. So Anyway, we're going to be doing the basic crash landed um, scenario because this is kind of a beginner's, this is a beginner's guide. Um, this is really if you want to get your hands into the game. So we're going to go crash landed. So the next thing you have to pick is your AI storyteller. So there's three different storytellers, as you can see here. Cassandra Classic is, uh, as, it, as her name implies, the classic kind of gaming uh, storyteller where she will take you from easy level to difficult level over a period of time so it's very classic um, and then you can change her difficulty here um, and that's the same with all the other storytellers this one is phoebe chillax as her name implies it's just a lot easier um, this is good if you're getting new to the game and you're just wanting to learn things um, 
ideal if you want to build like an ideal colony or something like that. Randy Random is the hardest of the storytellers. Um, he is, um, yeah, he, he can give you something really good at the start or really bad. It just all of a sudden, he, you'll just get random events, uh, different powerful things. And he gets more random and more brutal as you go up in difficulty here. So um, he's definitely the hardest. I'm going to go with Cassandra Classic because I would say that she's not so easy like Phoebe Chillax where we're not going to have uh, difficulty and we'll have to learn through difficulty but uh, yeah it will give, it'll give us some challenge. I suggest for your first playthrough you play on either Peaceful or Builder just to learn the game. I'm going to be playing on Medium uh, just because uh, I, I'm familiar with the game but I don't want to make it too hard for purpose of the guide. Now, reload anytime mode or commitment mode. This is dependent on, you know, basically when you can save. Reload anytime, you can save and load whenever you want. Commitment mode, it only saves when you exit the game and you're committed. I usually play on commitment mode because I think that's the way the game is really intended to be played. But for the purposes of this guide, I'm going to play on reload anytime mode. And I suggest this for your first playthrough. Um, Reload anytime mode is, I'm just going to be using this in case of failed recordings, things of that nature. Um, but normally I'm just going to go with whatever whatever happens so that I can show how to deal with uh, consequences. Okay, if we click next. So here we're going to get a, uh, a seed. I guess our seed is cauliflower. Um, we can randomize the seed. This is what's going to generate the planet. Um, you can change the globe coverage. I would suggest keeping this at 30, because if you go higher, you're going to experience just uh, a lot more. Uh, you're, you might experience lag and stuff like that. Keep it 30, keep it small, especially for your first uh, playthrough. I also wouldn't suggest messing with this unless you know what you're doing. So we're gonna hit generate. As you can see, I have this official content core um, I do not have royalty the new LDLC. I also have some mods, but I won't be using these. They're just loaded. But all these mods do is uh, enable something called prepare carefully. Okay, so this is um, this is the world that we've generated. As you see, 30% of it is covered in land, and the rest, pretty much, you know, uh, the 60% um, is covered in is covered in water. Or sorry, 70%. I can't do math, apparently. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through basically all the biomes in the game. Um, this this first episode is just going to be about starting. So uh, as you can see, there's, there's different biomes. Um, I'm going to go from easy to hard in terms of biomes. The easiest uh, biome uh, is the temperate forest. So the temperate forest is really warm. You, oftentimes you'll find year-round growing seasons, uh, not a lot of dangerous flora or fauna. Disease rates are pretty pretty good. So it's, it's really easy. It's a really good way to learn the game. Next, if we can find one somewhere. Ah, this little darker area here. Oh, no, that's not that. Ah, right here. Uh, is temperate swamp. So it's, it's easy, again, like... Uh, like the temperate forest, but uh, it's you're going to have more diseases, and you're going to have um, more. Um, you're going to have less area to develop because it's going to be taken up by marshes. This is going to be a reoccurring theme. You're going to see there's going to be a biome, and then a biome that kind of goes with it that is harder by making it more marshy and have it more disease-ridden, um, disease uh, riddled with diseases. So here we go. So those are the, the two easiest biomes. Uh, next, we're going to go into something uh, that's also pretty easy. Um, and it's kind of debated whether or not this is actually the easiest biome. I got to find it. Yeah, this. It's called arid shrubland. So this is a very dry region, but not too dry. Uh, so it's not really a desert. Um, so you'll find plants and trees, um, but they're more scattered and you're not going to find um, nearly as many so you're gonna have problems with uh, collecting wood um, so the 
and also a lot of this like you're not going to find as much arable soil as you would in the in the temperate forest or the uh, temperate swamp but it's still pretty easy and uh, that's more getting into so the normal difficulty i would say would be arid shrubland next up we have uh, boreal forest so now we're getting colder um, so you're going to get lots of lots of uh, coniferous trees um, and you're going to get some really harsh winters um, but you're going to also have a diverse population of, of animals to hunt um, but also some predatorial ones so you're going to want to be careful of that um, now kind of the swamp version of the boreal forest is the uh, if we can find one cold bog so it's a lot like the uh the boreal forest but you're going to get more diseases um and you're going to get more uh you know you're going to have less land to work with because it's going to be overtaken by marsh so uh next we're going to go down to the tropical rainforest this is the next hardest biome in the game um so you're going to, it's really hot here and you're going to, you know, you would think that that would be good for crops and it is, but, uh, there's lots of animal wildlife and tons of disease. You're going to have lots of disease to deal with and a lot of dangerous, uh, animals. So you're going to have, um, you know, the difficulty really comes here from being hunted a lot by animals. So it's kind of like the hunter becoming the hunted in this case. So that's tropical rainforest. If we go over here, this is tropical swamp, even harder version. Um, this is the most diseases that you'll see. Uh, as you see, average disease frequency is 2.0 per year. That's the highest it gets. So you're gonna have a lot of diseases, aggressive animals, and uh, also just a lot of marshes gonna start taking over your land for development. So it gets really hard. Next hardest biome is the um, desert here we'll just find this little area here this desert so it's a very dry area um, so you're gonna have life um, but it's uh, oh I should also mention something sorry um, the temperate swamp the temperate forest the tropical rainforest and the tropical swamp those are the warm biomes they're classified as warm um, when you get into the Arab shrub shrubland and the desert that's hot boreal forest cold bog that's cold just wanted to mention that quickly sorry that the lack of organization here so um yeah we have the desert uh the desert is a very hot dry area um so you're gonna have lots of problems uh, actually uh finding soil to irrigate and uh and it's you're not gonna find a lot of animals so it's gonna be hard to to hunt so that's another hot biome. Another cold biome, next level of difficulty, harder than the desert, is uh, the tundra. So these are mostly frozen plains, bare, almost no trees, and little vegetation. There are few small animals um, interspersed with large herds of uh, mig migratory grazers and their predators. So you're going to have a lot of predators here. It's going to be very, very cold. Um, you're also not going to have a lot of animals to hunt. So starvation, hypothermia, lots of problems are going to, are going to happen here. And finally, we have the last of the hot biomes. Um, if we can find one, might be able to find one. Yeah, right here. This lighter, um, brown uh, is the extreme desert so this is the hardest of the hot biomes um, it's an extremely hot dry area devoid of, om of almost all life uh, searing heat um, and and a near total lack of arable land make it difficult to survive here um, that was really weird I don't know what happened to my volume it went up but it was funny because I was joking around with my friends, sending them Funky Kong ASMR videos. <laughs> and uh, it just like Funky Kong ASMR crap just came up. So that was pretty funny. Okay, so that's, I would say uh, it gets hard once you get into desert and tundra. And then it gets very hard once you get into extreme desert. Um, the next really hard biome is another um, we're only into the cold biomes now is the ice sheet so yeah this is pretty bad so 
sheets of ice can be kilometers thick. There is no soil for plants to grow in. The only animals here are migrating somewhere else or badly lost. Yeah. So it's just, it's really hard to, to survive uh, this. You have no room for crops. You have to build greenhouses, all sorts of stuff. Oftentimes in this state, you have to resort to cannibalism to survive. So it gets pretty bad. And then finally, the last one is sea ice. Um, permanent ice sheets floating on water. There is no soil for plants uh, to grow, no minerals to mine, and almost no animal life. This is like hopeless difficulty. This is the hardest biome. Um, they don't even, I don't even think the developers meant for you to colonize here. I think they just meant it to be like, if you're, tran if you're going from one spot to another, you'd be going through this area. But uh, yeah, it's just even more hopeless than than the ice sheet because at least with the ice sheet you'll have like some animals with sea ice there's like there's like none and there's no minerals either so it's just it's bad it's bad anyway so big overview of biomes there but we're going to go with tempered forest the easiest one just for this walkthrough because uh we're going to be learning the game so a couple things to keep in mind over here, uh, you'll see terrain. You'll want this on your first playthrough to be flat or small hills, just so you have a lot of space to develop. Uh, movement difficulty, this this kind of just goes along with the terrain. Um, stone types, I like to have marble and granite. Marble because it's the most beautiful stone in the game and you can make statues out of it. And granite because it's very uh, thick and durable and uh, it's good for defensive walls. Uh, elevation doesn't matter too much. Uh, average temperature, this will kind of go with your growing period. You want a year-round growing period um, because you want to be able to grow your crops all the time. So keep that in mind. That's probably the most important part of, uh, of a first walkthrough. Uh, rainfall doesn't matter too much. Uh, forgeability, uh, this will just tell you what, what you can forge. We can forge berries here. Uh, animals can graze. That's important. You'll want that to say yes. Um, this will tell you your average disease frequency. This is always 1.2 in the tempered forest. And your time zone, it's just telling you where you are on the globe. Okay, another thing to keep in mind is factions. So you'll want to be close to either this purple guy or this uh, yellow guy. More often this purple guy because they're neutral and they'll most more, they're more likely to trade with you. So you'll want to be near them. So we're going to try our best to find something kind of optimal here. Um, this is all tropical rainforest. Um, see, if we go up here, then we lose our growing period. So um, it's, it, it's balancing these things, really. So I, I stick to the middle. Um, kind of got unlucky with this world because, oh, another thing. Don't colonize an island, because you'll be stuck there. <laughs> so stay stay on the mainland, because there's no way to cross oceans yet, except through transport pods, pods, which you don't get very late in the game. So um, I'm just seeing like tropical rainforest down here, which is kind of wh why we're a little bit unlucky, because there's not a lot of temperate forest um, to choose from. But oh. Um, this might not be so bad. We have year-round. We have marble and granite. It's granite, right? That's what I said. <laughs> um, this might actually be the spot that we choose. Um, we're pretty close to these guys down here, which is good. And we have road up to these guys. So, huh, that's not too bad. Let's see if we can go a little bit north. So sandstone slate. Slate and marble. Sandstone, marble, and granite. I think that is probably... Ooh, this one's granite and marble. And we'll have more of it because we won't be dividing among the sandstone. So actually, we're going to settle here. So, yeah, and we'll right next to a road. This is a pretty good spot. So we're going to click next. Oh. Well, that sucks. So since we're in the within four tiles of these guys we're gonna be they're not gonna like us so much so maybe 
Maybe it's best if we do move over there. Unless I can find another spot. Marble and granite. But 50 out of... Oh, it's never... You never get everything, man. Dirt path. Marble, granite. Limestone. Man, we're just... We're so close. Granite, marble, limestone, year-round. That one might not be too bad. Um. Alright, I guess we will... Let's go with... So, oh, no, we need marble. Limestone and sandstone. Man, come on. Sandstone and marble. Sandstone, marble, and granite. Can I go here? Yes, I can. Okay, that's the spot we're picking. You won't have this prepare carefully piece because um, that's a mod that I'm that I have installed, but we're not going to use that. Um, so we're going to just randomize our um, colonists until we get something good here. Um, so when doing colonist selection, I'm just going to pull up my notes on colonist selection. You're going to want to, um, basically, you're going to want to avoid some things and you're going to want to have some things. So you're going to want to avoid some traits. You're going to want to avoid traits uh, like abrasive because it's just your colon those colonists will be picking fights all the time. You're going to want to uh, especially avoid chemical interest slash fascination uh, because um, when you're growing drugs and everything on your, on your place, uh, which we will be doing, uh, they're going to be, you know, obsessed with that and trying to use them all the time. And they'll develop addictions, which is really bad. Um, volatile colonists are really bad too, because uh, they'll all go into mental breakdowns all the time. And pyromaniacs will light all your crap on fire, so you'll want to avoid um, those traits. Other traits um, you can deal with because they're not so much of a detriment. Some are better than others. See, this is a pyromaniac. We don't want her, so we hit this randomize thing, and it'll give us someone new. Another thing is you're going to want to have no health conditions um, to start out. See, this person has some problems with their torso um, because, yeah, you just want them to be completely healthy. Uh, if possible, it's better to have younger colonists because they are, um, you know, they're not so prone to, like, age-related diseases that can happen. Um, Another thing is you'll want them to be incapable of none, at least for your first three colonists. You want people to be able to do everything um, at the start. So all these people are incapable of like dumb labor and stuff. It's not good. And that's determined by their childhood and adulthood uh, backstories. Um, last thing to note is you're going to want specific skills if possible. You're going to want... Um, you're going to want someone with social, medical, uh, a level five skill and with a uh, at least one flame or two flames beside social, medical, cooking, construction, plants, mining, and cra crafting and intellectual. So, yeah, essentially that's what we're going to be trying for. We'll see if we get it. This guy's actually really good. Holy crap. Trigger happy. That guy's really good. Um, what about this person? Yeah, we got really lucky. Um, so, do we have someone with uh, level 5 in social? Yes, we do. With a flame beside it. Yes, we do. What about uh, medical? We have a doctor. Um, we've got two doctors. Uh, do we have cooking? 
Uh, yes, this person's good at cooking. Um, do we have construction? Yes, this person's good at construction. Do we have plants? Um, this person's good at plants. This will also tell you a summary of, of your skills. I just want to see who has what. Mining, we've got this guy with 13. Crafting, 9. Wow, this guy's really good. Um, and intellectual. Um, do we have someone that's an intellectual? Yeah, this guy. Super mean, cannibal. I would say that this is pretty good. Um, you can also see if they have relations, but uh, we won't worry about that right now. So we got uh, this Fina, uh, Jonah, and Arvid. Uh, these three guys will be our colonists. And uh, yeah, so that's how we'll start. They're kind of old, except for her. These two guys are 58 and 54, but it's not too bad. So let's start. So it's going to start. We'll load up everything. Hmm. Yeah, If don't try to be so OCD about it that you don't gener like generate exactly who you want, because the odds of that happening is pretty slim. Okay, so this is our, um, our area right now, um, and we're going to go into base planning and kind of start on getting our colony uh, situated right away in the next episode. So this has been RimWorld for this time. I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys uh, next time. Hope you enjoyed.